Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this fun shuffling technique. So, lots of different ways in which you can use this and customise it. Let's take a look at how it's all done. OK, for my project settings, I've gone with 1920 1080, 24 frames a second and a duration of five seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is make some text, centre it up, centre it up here, make it nice and big and adjust the baseline. So the next thing I want to do is to select the group and come down to the rectangle mask tool here. And I'm going to draw a mask like that, taller than the frame roughly like that and let's come over to the size we're not really worried about his height as long as it's taller let's go for a width of 40 and let's just center it up as well so what we're going to do with the rectangle mask is we're going to apply a ramp behavior to its x position so x position add parameter behavior and ramp and we're going to start at negative a thousand and we're going to end at positive 1000. So this is just going to move the mask all the way across like that, right off the screen at either end. So then what we're going to do is we're going to take this group and we're going to make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer, and let's turn off the original. And from this clone, we're going to make a replicator. So come to object and replicate. For the shape, we're going to choose line, and we want to zero out these positions. And we want to come down here and we want to turn off play frames. And then let's have a source frame offset, I think of three. And then let's increase the points to, I think 40. So now we've filled everything in like that. So if we wanted narrower gaps, we could reduce the source frame offset. And if we wanted wider ones, we could increase it. I'm going to go with three, I think, and then I'm just going to slightly adjust my mask until I've closed the gaps a little bit. So let's go for wider like that. So 44, probably quite good. So then what we can do, having segmented our image like this, and we can now play with these segments and we can do that using sequence replicators. But first of all, I want to turn on 3D because I want a Y rotation with my sequence replicator. So that needs to be turned on there. So then we can come to behaviors and replicator, sequence replicator. Let's add rotation. Let's open up the rotation and let's have an amount of 160 for the Y. And that's looking like this. So I just want to shorten this sequence replicator down a little bit. So I'm going to come to four seconds on the timeline, make sure it's selected and hit O on the keyboard just to shorten it down a bit like that. So actually, I want to set the sequencing here to through, which is why it's all looking a bit odd. So let's have a look at that. So now that's flicking around like that. Let's also add another parameter here. Let's come to position and let's set that Y to 50. Let's also add a scale. So scale and set that scale to 125. Starting to be a bit more interesting now. And I'm going to add another sequence replicator. So add sequence replicator from here. Again, let's come to four seconds, hit O on the keyboard to shorten it down like that. For this one, we're going to use opacity and we want from for the sequencing and we're going to set the opacity down to zero. And let's just have a spread, I think about two here. And while we're at it, let's set the spread of this other one to five. So now, what have we got? Much nicer. I want to have a slightly more interesting look to my segments. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the clone layer. So that's not the, the cell, the replicator cell, the actual clone layer here. Come to filters and blur and Gaussian blur, and also come to filters, color and levels. Let's set the Gaussian blur amount up to 32. And let's switch the levels to alpha. And then if we just play with these values here, you can see we've got rounded 
segments and that's way more interesting than what we had before I think. So now it's looking like this which is pretty cool. Another fun thing we could do is if we actually wanted some variation in the position of these slices we could come back to our original text layer properties and let's add to the y position add parameter behavior wriggle and you can see now we've actually sort of shuffled them vertically let's set the apply mode to add and subtract and we don't really want as much as that so maybe let's go for 30 just kind of add something quite interesting there if we wanted less randomness what we could do instead of wriggle we could add parameter behavior oscillate we need to make sure we apply that to the y position again and we want an amplitude of i don't know let's go back to 30 again and if we play with the speed you'll see that we can increase the frequency of that so this is not actually animating it is just moving the slices like that before they're animated it's probably a bit too much so we go with 10 or whatever but it's kind of already more interesting than just the text on its own Another thing we could do to make it a bit more interesting is to select this top group here, come to Filters, Glow and Neon, turn the Mix value down to 10 and this Inner Glow value, let's set it to something like 200. And it just gives this kind of nice subtle sort of halation effect. So I'm just going to turn that off and I'm going to do one more thing and that is to import an image into this background group here. So I'm going to come to Import and I'm going to import my image here. Now we can't use this levels and blur thing on this because obviously it's blurring the image so let's just turn those two off but just let's have a look at how that plays just like that. It's a really nice thing to do with an image because we are shuffling those pieces. His, his eyes start off over here for example. It assembles really nicely. If we still wanted to see our text move it on top there Let's set its blend mode to subtract. Let's come to the end where we can see it. We probably need to reduce its size a bit and move it over. So together, that looks like this, which again is pretty cool. And I've just got one final little trick for you here. And that is if we come to our ramp behavior here and we play with the curvature, you'll see we get these stripes that are not uniform and I think that's a really nice look especially for something like this really quite a, a cool variation so anyway hope that's given you some ideas as to how to use this technique and I hope you have fun playing with it so thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon